to a certain degree there is this 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 uh, factor of um, that parts of the immigrant population in Western Europe, in Europe, and especially in Western Europe, because that's what we're talking about. This is actually a European problem. Is alienated. But uh, I'm fundamentally optimistic about uh, European integration because uh, there's no other alternative. Because everybody talks always about the big member countries and what's happening, but don't forget that uh, you have the smaller and medium sized European countries that are as much interested in doing trade with India as the bigger ones. So uh, we, we really hope that um, this will be concluded in, in, a, in a constructive way. Belgium in the news, of course, because of recent events in France. Um, many of us have looked on Europe with its uh, human rights-centered uh, governance, with uh, its peaceful record with minorities as a kind of model of what India should be. And yet we find that you have a very substantial problem of radicalization. Um, Belgium, in per capita terms, I think, sending the highest number of jihadists from Europe to the Islamic State. Why is this and what does it tell us about the problem of minorities in Europe today? Yes, thank you. That's of course a very relevant question. Now, first of all, Belgium is not sending these people. Uh, they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're going by themselves, uh, obviously. and. Um, and we have seen uh, of late uh, actually a substantial drop in the people who have, have been leaving. Um, uh, I, I read some statistics which saying that about 270 people from Belgium who have gone that side. Um, and um, well, I, I uh, of course, because of also what came in the media internally, people have been looking at it in Brussels. And uh, uh, one of the reasons why the numbers um, are relatively high is uh, first of all that uh, in the Belgian statistics they also count the non-Belgians who are resident in Belgium to go there which is not done by other countries necessarily. Also we have had a very serious and transparent effort to exactly see who is going and when they're going etc. So uh, maybe uh, there is a bit of um, yeah, how to put it efficiency of our <laughs> services that we have been able to identify these people, which has, of course, um, pulled up the numbers. So, I mean, I'm not saying that there's not an issue, but uh, uh, Belgium being on the top, I think you have to relativize this, this uh, thing. Um, now, with, after what happened in Paris, obviously, there was a bit of a focus on Belgium and uh, in some uh, international media, they kind of make a, made a caricature out of Belgium, which is, of course, uh, um, or even I may say so, not very good journalism, uh, and um, it's uh, of course it hits the high, um, headlines, and, and that of course makes for good reading. I think the thing is that um, well, first you have the issue of fight against terrorism. That's not really what your question was about, so we can talk about that at another moment. Uh, there is certainly uh, to. Um, to a certain degree, there is this 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 uh, factor of um, that parts of the immigrant population in Western Europe, in Europe, and especially in Western Europe, because that's what we're talking about. This is actually a European problem. Is alienated. There's no doubt about it. There are several reasons uh, which have been been uh, put forward why this is happening. Um, uh, there are, of course. One should realize that um, these populations, which are mainly, uh, of course, from North Africa and, and I guess the Middle East, um, are people who were there since one, two, maximum three generations. So, integration process in, in, in a continent which is not typically an immigration continent has just been a difficult issue. Um, we, in Europe, uh, Europeans uh, till the beginning of the 20th century tended to be emigrants themselves going mainly to the US. So uh, people um, used to live in their own environment uh, often for generations, centuries in the same village under the same church tower. And then uh, people came in from um, 
uh, other parts of the world with completely different cultural backgrounds. And uh, I guess you say you can even say the first generation often was not so problematic because that was a time in the 60s, 70s when a lot of jobs were there and these people were brought in to do these jobs. So everything worked well. It was a win-win situation. But then you come to the second generation and uh, young people who are born in, uh, in, in, in our countries who feel that they belong there, but at the same time they feel that they're not necessarily 100% accepted. So that certainly has created a lot of frustrations uh, among some of them and, and then uh, a, a small, because you have to, to really realize that you're talking here about a, a very small proportion of these people have, have, yeah, have become very radicalized and extremist and um, uh, you know, you're talking about several hundreds of people, but in, in, in statistical terms, it's really a very minute percentage. But it's enough, of course, to create uh, trouble, and 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 that's uh, that's a little bit what has been happening, I think. Uh, I guess a lot of these youngsters have identified with uh, what was happening, in, especially then in Syria first in Palestine and then in Syria, and that has um, has led them to um, some of them to to go over there and. and and fight. Many people in the wake of the Paris attacks talking about relooking at Schengen and of course the border controls. Uh, what, what, what do you see the future of the European Union and all that it's brought for countries like Nigeria uh, being? Is the European idea now under, under some kind of threat? Well, the European idea exists in just after the Second World War. I mean, Belgium is one of the six, as I said, uh, founding fathers, of, as, as we call it, of the European integration. So for us, it remains an important element. And, and don't forget, uh, it exists in such a long time. Uh, EU is not just an international organization. We have had some quite, I mean, the integration within, amongst the European countries is, is, goes really quite deep. Uh, so, this whole, I mean, there are several debates and there have been several challenges uh, that have been confronting uh, the EU since the since last couple of years, uh, you know them all. And um, until now, globally seen, the EU has been able to, to, to digest it and, and to come out even a little bit stronger each time. But it remains a difficult challenge and the European idea, I don't know what that is actually. I think uh, Europe, it's a bit like, it's like India. I mean, uh, we are probably as complicated as India, maybe a bit less complicated than India. <laughs> but okay, we have a different historical context, which makes that, of course, we have different debates. So um, like the whole uh, discussion with the UK. We'll, we'll see what, what happens there and, and, and how the debate will evolve. Uh, basically, the biggest challenge for the EU as you know, a concept and a, and, a, and a kind of a societal complex is, I think, probably the, the, um, the refugees uh, issue, because that has a direct impact upon the sentiment of public opinion and and and, uh, and there of course uh, well well uh, yeah it's it's a bit wait and see I mean I think uh, our politicians are really trying to tackle these issues as much as possible uh, but it's uh, of course these are issues in uh, in in several of these domains uh, you have to work with consensus amongst 28 which is not always easy and uh, it's a work in progress. But uh, I'm fundamentally optimistic about uh, European integration because uh, there's no other alternative. If we become uh, like, again, uh, if we go back to, to, uh, to situations from, from before the Second World War, I mean, um, of course, uh, which, which I don't think is even possible, but uh, it's, it's, it's in nobody's interest, not in European interest, not in, 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 in the interest of the world at large. India-EU FTA agreement that is being negotiated now for what seven years or eight years now? I mean, lost count. Years. It's been on the card yeah. for many years. Um, what is the biggest challenge, issue, sticking point is facing right now? 
the, the main challenge was basically to get the parties back together to, to, to um, work on, on finalizing this and uh, because uh, if I'm not mistaken this, this negotiations have not not been taking place for, for the last what, two years. So now I think in January there is, um, they're going to come together, the EU negotiators and the Indian negotiators for stock taking and to take it up from there. So I, I, I prefer to wait a little bit to see what the stock taking will give and, and, and as to how the two parties uh, evaluate each other's positions before saying something about that because whatever was the point they arrived at uh, two years ago was of course under the previous government here in India. In the meanwhile I understand that uh, the Ministry of Commerce has done an evaluation of all the existing FTAs. Um, I don't think the, um, the results of this evaluation have been made public so I don't really know exactly what, what, is, uh, what it's all about but I understand that the government over here wants to be um, careful in whatever new FTAs are going to be um, agreed upon. So let's wait till January and see what comes out of it. But I'm happy at least, because it is important that this FTA should be finally concluded. It's important uh, for the economic relations between India and the EU. And I should tell you that it's very important for uh, you know, the 28 member countries, because everybody talks always about the big member countries and what's happening. But don't forget that uh, you have the smaller and medium-sized European countries that are as much interested in doing trade with India as the bigger ones. So uh, we, we really hope that um, this will be concluded in, in, a, in a constructive way.